Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel, Nursing Education Tutor. My name is Cheryl Spencer. So in this video, I just want to talk to you about, you know, what's new, you know, with COVID-19 and, you know, what are the conversations that are going on um, and just see, you know, where we are. So I know, you know, a lot of states are on pause. A lot of countries are still on pause. In the great state of New York, where I am, we're still on pause until May 15th. So of course, you know, we're all waiting to see where this goes. The good news is that the daily rate of deaths from COVID-19, it is going down. It's still a pretty high number in the low 200s, um, but you know, it, it is going down. You know, currently, according to the CDC, New York is still number one in New Jersey, which is a state right across the water. And you know, other states are, are dealing with that, but the, the curve is, is um the curve is being leveled a bit so social distance and that stuff of course as, as the weather gets warm people are still trying to go outside and you know i you have to go out for essential you know it's, you know stay home is fine but not everybody can get food delivered so some people do have to go out you know they have to go out for essential you know most pharmacies will deliver medicine but people still have to go out for food and in a lot of states a facial covering i.e. mask of some sort, cloth, crocheted, you know, wholesale or, you know, handmade um, is a requirement and, and most people are, are abiding by that. The fear in the health community is that as the weather gets warmer and people get cabin fever, you know, from being in their own homes, you know, people will go out and then unfortunately, unknowingly start this spread again. And I think that's really what is of concern why some people are reluctant to quote unquote open up the country. Now, I really do feel bad, you know, for, you know, some of those individuals who, you know, they're relying on their jobs, you know, they, they, they're not working. Um, essential workers, and thank goodness for, for them, those in the health field, um, cashiers, police officers, first responders, they're there, even the, the sanitation worker, who seldom, I think, gets enough credit for what they do are quite essential. And I'm truly grateful when I see them coming to pick up our trash. I mean, imagine someone's picking up your trash for a living. We should really should be grateful for them. So, you know, what I've learned recently, um, a little bit more about this virus, is that a lot of, well, as everyone knows by now, a lot of patients diagnosed with COVID-19, especially the ones who were really severe, end up on a ventilator and in the healthcare community, you know, they're questioning whether uh, putting everyone on a ventilator in the early stages was correct. Well, it's, you know, it's easy to, you know, be, you know, Monday morning uh, quarterback, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. What's happening and what's reported in an article, if you get a chance to look in the New York Times, it's talking about a lot of people who are positive for COVID-19 and they're, they're coming into the emergency room presenting with a very low pulse ox. Now, most of you will know we want a pulse ox uh, a O2 sat anywhere about, above 95% for an adult, for somebody with any chronic obstructive pulmonary disease such as emphysema um, or bronchitis. You know, if they're above 92 in a good day, you know, we're fine. You know, there's certain things that they have to do sometimes to um, get them approved for oxygen at home, but that's for, for another time. But a lot of these individuals coming in with symptoms of COVID-19, even the milder symptoms of COVID-19, when they check their pulse oximeters, pulse oximetry rather, it's in the 60s and 70s. And you know, as you know, even fundamental students and even as new nurses, you know, someone with a pulse ox even with in the high 80s, sometimes we'll start to have signs and symptoms of cyanosis. You know, the lip might be a little bit dusky. Capillary fill is delayed. Um, nail color looks kind of dusky. Now, some of these individuals come in with really, really low pulse ox. And, you know, the treatment, of course, now, um, it's still, it's, you know, usually it's a non-rebreather and then to ventilator. Believe it or not, I've, you know, spoken to a nurse practitioner. There are many patients have a non-rebreather and even have a nasal cannula uh, underneath it. So, you know, as the health team is learning more about COVID-19 and each client is different, you know, I am, I am, I'm hopeful that, you know, a better understanding lead to better outcomes and that as we, as, as we learn more, you know, for nursing students who are now at home, uh, not getting minimal or any clinical experience because most nursing schools are now online, 
distance learning, there's no clinical. It is my hope that as schools start to open and then the healthcare community is reminded and recognized the importance that nursing students play, not just in giving care to nursing school, but to cultivate the next generation of nurses and how can you ever get there if you don't have opportunities to practice. Telehealth is amazing, but there's some things that just have to be done in person. So it is my hope that schools will definitely be some type of in-person uh, class during the fall. The semester is coming to an end for most schools. Some probably already finished heading into final exams and then a lot of schools there's no commencement in person for in person for those individuals I'm sure it's such a milestone everybody looks forward to it I'm not sure if they look forward to the cap and gown part but they look forward to that it's a rite of passage a lot of uh, students or, or graduates you know are graduating from a school that a parent or some of the member of their family went to so it's tradition you know you know, NCAA, whether you go, you know, whether you pledge, whether it's a historically black college, whether it's an Ivy League, whether it's a community college, many students, uh, they go to a college where other members of their family go. And, you know, of course, they don't have that opportunity to do that. On a personal note, in the nursing field, we have a candle lighting ceremony. So for the students who are graduating now, I, I hope that if it's not done this semester, uh, where, whatever school you are, if it's not done at the end of this semester because of the social distance from COVID-19, hopefully maybe in the summer everyone can be creative and try to be positive and do something. It's just such a rite of passage and it's just, it's tradition and there's certain things for, you know, we, we love to do with tradition. It is May, um, it is Nurses Month. It's the year of the nurse, my goodness. The year of the nurse and the mid midwife, and, and my goodness, has it not been? Well, so, of course, historically, May has been Nurses Month, and the first week in, in May has also been Nurses Week. It coincides with the birth date of Florence Nightingale. I think she turns, she turns 200 this year. You know, Florence Nightingale was a trailblazer as many other nurse leaders. And I always tell students, you know, look, look for the others, you know, you know, where there's one, there's another one. You can look, I can think of, of so many of those like um, Mary Seacole, I often uh, uh, think about. And you know, some of these amazing um, army nurses and, and medics, you know, always get, get into that. So, uh, so again, this video is just, you know, be aware of the different things that we're learning about with COVID-19 and on, on, the, on, the, on the front line, learning that they're looking on treatment a little bit different. Not everyone's being intubated as fast because, you know, you learn in respiratory, you know, if you have a machine breathes for you, perhaps you won't be breathing you know, to your potential. So again, you know, we're learning and, and that's just really, you know, what it is. But anyway, so I just wanted to pop on here, do a quick video, uh, find out how everybody's doing. I hope we're leveling the curve a bit by contributing to our part. If we happen to be out, we use some type of facial covering and just be mindful, not cross contaminate as well. And as the states and the country consider um, opening up, I hope it happens in a safe way that individuals who are really suffering from loss of their income, I hope that they can get back to um, some, some sort of normal life where they can be fulfilled, they can work, they can earn, they can support themselves, their families, have some sort of recreation, uh, pay for health care, contribute to this amazing place that they live. and and. It, it, it's really stressful. I mean, I, I'm always, you know, grateful for, you know, my ability to teach online and I do have that flexibility. Not a lot of people have that flexibility. So I think we should always be mindful of others and, you know, and where they are. And if we're in a position to help a fellow human being, I think, well, isn't that part of, of being a nurse? I mean, you give what you can and you help a person do better. You, you teach them how to fish. If, there's a person that there's something that you can do and it has worked well for you teach it to someone and try your best to make it in a simple in a simple way that it's um attainable don't don't sell it so difficult 
that the person gets turned off from it. So again, as always, I, I tell you to, to be well and, and, and be good to yourself as we start to slowly return, hopefully to some sense of normalcy. As always, if this is your first time to my channel, I hope you stay. Have a good day.